Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Sea of Thieves News. We've got terrifying treats headed to the Pirate Emporium and an update from Drew Stevens on hit registration, sword combat and more. And it's extra special because we're on the cusp of a new season. That's right, season 10 is nearly here! Season 10 of Sea of Thieves starts next week on October 19th, and there's plenty to get stuck into. There's over 100 levels of new rewards to start unlocking through your seasonal progression, as well as the introduction of guilds. With guilds, you'll be able to play with others under a shared identity, creating meaningful social bonds, all while engaging in a new progression route that'll unlock some incredible new rewards. And then in November, we're releasing the Skull of Sirens song, a new type of competitive voyage where you'll battle against other crews in an action-packed race to be the first to claim a powerful ancient artifact. Then in December, we'll be adding Safer Seas, a new way to play Sea of Thieves either alone or with up to three of your friends outside of the shared world. And when Season 10 launches on October 19th, we'll be adding new items to the Outpost stores. With the Gold Leaf ship set and weapons, you can show that your passion for shiny things doesn't just end with buried treasure. It may cost a pretty penny, but then style doesn't come cheap. And with the start of a new season, we've got an exciting selection of new items with the optional Season 10 Plunder Pass. With the Stormfish Chasers Collector's ship set, you'll have everything you need to battle the elements and navigate the roughest of seas. With its striking details, other crews will know there's a storm brewing when they see this ship on the horizon. Now let's go over to Drew for new information about some exciting updates coming to the game. Hey everyone. Uh, I wanted to give a bit of an update today on across a range of hot topic issues that focus around the core game health of Sea of Thieves. We've got to start off, if we talk about hot topic issues, with our old favourite hit registration. I'm not going to talk about how complicated hit registration is as a thing to go and fix. Instead, I'm going to focus on what we're doing and why you should be excited about it. So we've had a strike team invested in hit registration as a space for about six months. That team has been working on a range of small improvements that together we feel should make a meaningful improvement to the experience of hit registration out in retail. We've been gaining confidence slowly but surely using insiders as we've built that set of changes up. And actually as part of our August and September's updates, we've released some of those improvements behind the scenes out into retail. The best wins that we've seen in this space are encounters between players that are at long range. So think players that are 20 plus meters apart. We are reaching a point more generally now where nine out of 10 shots that you fire that hit on the client also now hit on the server. There's been some great work from the team so far, but we continue to invest in this space. Ultimately, we don't feel like we're done yet. If we consider that one in 10 shots that you fire still doesn't hit and land and give you that satisfaction, it's not good enough. So we're gonna be continuing to invest in hit reg and assessing what we can go do to improve the experience further. So next up, let's talk about cheating. So there's two things that I wanna update on here. The first one is that we're continuing to work reactively on issues and vulnerabilities that are surfaced. Most recently, there was a teleportation issue that was kind of heavily affecting Hourglass PVP has been improved in a previous update. This set of changes, in addition to the teleportation fix, has reduced the reports of cheating that have reached our player support team by about 30%. So a significant reduction in cheating reports, but we know they're still there. We know that the cheating space is an arms race between us as developers and the cheat developers. So while we continue to work reactively in this space, we are also now investing in integrating an industry-leading anti-cheat solution into Sea of Thieves. We intend to cut cheating off at its roots. 
we're not in a place where we're going to share more of the details or the specifics or when this implementation is coming because we don't want to show our hand to potentially nefarious groups that could use it to their advantage. But we will share more on this when we're ready. We are committed to improving the experience for players in this space. So we've talked hit reg, we've talked cheating, Let's talk about player combat. Most notably, let's talk about sword play. So season 10 introduces a range of fixes and improvements to sword combat with the goal of improving the smoothness and flow of sword combat, making sure that attacking and defending has, is a consistent experience for all. In season 10, attackers that land the first hit in a sword combat encounter will now retain the combat advantage to be able to finish their combo. This is going to force defenders that take that first hit to begin to think about defending, about blocking, about moving to move out of strikes. We feel confident that with this change, this should smooth out the experience of sword play and make it much more clear who has the advantage in the encounter. So we've talked about attacking, let's talk about defending. As part of season 10, the blocking experience in sword combat is now much more consistent and much more reliable. Defenders that are holding up a block should be able to feel confident that an attacker attacking from anywhere in front of them or even right in front or even inside them will be able to con consistently defend from that attack. Across sword combat more generally, this update also improves the general consistency of feedback when hitting players with your sword at the maximum range of the sword. Previously, you might get feedback that indicated that you'd hit, whereas the player on their side were too far out of range and didn't receive the feedback. As part of this update, this should be much more consistent. If you see that player flinch, they will have taken damage. So from sword play to gun play. Now this is a controversial one. Season 10 is gonna remove the benefit that some players gained when equipping two ranged weapons. When they used a technique to switch between those weapons and fire two shots faster than intended. With the next update, players might find that they can still cancel that animation. But the important thing is, is that the time between firing those shots will be consistent with the regular shoot, switch, shoot approach. Players actually who try to quick switch in the old technique may actually find that it takes longer to get off that second shot. We appreciate that changing something that has become muscle memory for a lot of players is a challenge, but we feel confident that this levels the playing field for all players that are using two ranged weapons as a, as a weapon loadout, not just those who have mastered the technique. We're steadfast in resolving this issue. So as part of this section, I've talked quite broadly across a range of hot topic issues. At least some of these will have affected part of your experience playing Sea of Thieves. Most of this work has actually been achieved by a new team that we've brought on board. That team has a key focus on improving the health of the game experience. We feel much more confident as we look ahead to the future that we can do a much better job of staying on top of these hot topics and delivering more regular improvements alongside our seasons. Well, I think that's enough from me. If you have any questions, please don't contact me personally on social media. Take care and see you on the seas. As the days get shorter and we head into the season of spooks and spectres, we are bringing a selection of spine-tingling new items to the Pirate Emporium. These devilish delights will be available in the Pirate Emporium when Season 10 launches on October 19. And over on the Rare Store, we've got a spectacular selection of new merchandise to celebrate the annual Festival of Fear. We've had unconfirmed reports that some items may be cursed, but I'm sure it's fine. And on October 13th, 
fire up your favourite music streaming service and send a shiver down your spine with the latest addition to the Sea of Thieves soundtrack, Haunted Fortress. In addition to this bone-chilling bounty of newness, if you're looking for something more on the bright and happy side, but that can also stop a fearsome phantom in its tracks, you can grab the Paradise Garden Blunderbuss from the Pirate Emporium for free from October 19th. And that's it for another episode. If you liked what you just saw and you want to stay up to date with everything Sea of Thieves, then remember to like, subscribe, and toll the bell for all those glorious notifications. Cheers.